cool. Um, just a little repair video. A bit random, but cool. Um, so, got a few things on. On the healing bench today we have a cheapo IKEA light. Um, it was dropped, so the, um, the piece of plastic that, that held the, um, the transformer in position um, broke off. So I printed it a new one. Uh, so that'll go in there and then just hot glue that to the uh, broken bottom so the hot glue is holding it together at the bottom. It'll fit in there nice and snug. Should be good. Um, also, <laughs> I'll be hand. Woo! Um, so uh, this part here broke. Um, see the uh, piece at the end broke, the little grippy bit. So I printed it off a new arm. The first time I've actually um, scanned the um, scanned the piece in. Picture of this with a um, with a ruler next to it, and then scaled it up in Autodesk, and then traced around the outside. Need to find it, see if there's a an automatic way of doing it. That'd be cool. Tracing outlines of things and then just extruding it out. Get the basic shape and then guess from pictures on the internet what what the end piece looks like. Um, and then the this piece here was all kind of perished. A bit mangled and ripped. So, if I had my, if I could print it with a flexible filament, I would have done. But I still haven't managed to get it to go through the um, the extruder head. It just gets all balled up inside. I need to make some more guides, I think. But this seems to work nice, pretty nice. Um, just uh, ABS print. The space for a magnet in the end. So it should be good. Good as new. Might see if there's some rubber tape or something I can find to cover that. I was thinking this channel could be filled with silicon that's stuck up a little bit. Um, but it seems to work just fine like that. Um, ah, it's cool. Uh, third on the bench we have battery packs for drills. These are the uh, Panasonic batteries. Um, Panasonic's uh, uh, EY9L45s. Uh, 4.2 ampere lithium ion. 14.4 volts. Um, this one is actually knackered. So I've just been testing them with um, a rip-off charger, uh, the um, uh, IMAX B6 uh, China clone charger for, for lipos. Seems to be alright. I'm um, just hooking it up to the power terminals um, and then discharging it and using the discharge function to measure the capacity of the battery. This one was actually crap. That's like 700 milliamp hours. I'll split this one. But this one managed to get stop myself before I ripped it to bits. But yeah, we're getting like four milliamp hours. So uh, f it wasn't charging; it was giving a battery um, broken battery error. But I think it's these contacts here that are dirty. Um, took it apart and I had it in the charger, and it just wiggled it a little bit, and it started to work. So I'll try ox offing, like get some contact cleaner in there, and see if that makes a difference. Um, so I was working on three uh, three packs. Actually quite nice looking packs. Um, I was thinking they'd be like some horrible inbuilt um, um, inbuilt um, lifespan obsolescence inbuilt obsolescence. But it seems to be quite nice though the, the, the case is screwed together nicely. Pretty solid and it's got this nice um, Glass reinforced plastic um, a holder that separates the battery, and presumably you get some cooling effect as well. Pretty quite, quite robust and solid. Um, and then just a little control board was soldered on top. Um, there's not a huge amount of chips there. I couldn't get the numbers off that one. They're there, but I might need to find a magnifying glass. Um, but I'm thinking maybe the fault was just a battery charger. Um, and these are the ones that are. This is the other pack that ripped apart. And they're all coming up at like 2.2 amp hours. So they're schmick as. And I might um, rebalance the pack actually. Since I've got them all apart, I'll sort them back together. But I can add up the numbers and put them in. Because it's a four series pack, uh, two parallel. I'll add up the numbers and try and make them balanced. So that, yeah, an equal number of uh, numbers in each of the cell groups. Which might extend the life of the battery, maybe. That's good. Um, yeah, I kind of wish I'd tested it before I ripped it but, uh, to pieces, but such is the way we learn. Ta da! Too easy. 
So that worked out pretty nice. Um, no rattle, sorted. I reckon that's got the same, similar, probably stronger than it was. Um, as much ventilation as there was. Uh, I'm not too worried about any heat effects or anything in there. It looks, it looks like a good fix. Um, obviously I spent some time fixing it. Um, and I don't know if it's worth it. Dive out a piece of what have we got? A few kilos from landfill there. A bit of plastic. Useful thing again. Um, uh, plus, yeah, like the the grippy hand. You know, that's a, <laughs> you can get them new for fifteen pounds. Um, but um, I guess I'm investing in the um, in the process, being able to fix real world things with 3D printed components though yeah you can just uh, model what's uh, what the broken part is, print it off and you're back in business without throwing out the whole body and getting a new thing um, I guess it's kind of a bit old, it's a bit bended there and stuff so and yeah whether or not it's worth it but I guess I could put the models for these online somewhere and then have some kind of database of fixy fixy parts because it might be a common failure mode for this grip air that this bit breaks here and the rubber perishes um, so if there was a model available it wouldn't take very long for somebody just to print one off especially mass produced components like um, I guess there's thousands of these made and they probably all break there so yeah if there was a database that I could search before modeling the parts because the modeling the parts seems to take the time um, it might make it stuff easier to repair with 3D printed components. Um, but as well, I guess there's considerations about how to how 3D printed parts gonna change and e yeah I know because I, I didn't print off the little uh, cleat in the back here to hold the rope so now it's just got a knot in it. Not quite as easy to set up but it seems to work just fine. Um, there's kind of small 3D printer dependent um, design decisions kind of take a bit of time and a couple of revisions as well so if somebody spent the time making something it'd be cool if it was online but then there might be copyright issues as well so but yeah as far as it goes like it is definitely possible to repair stuff with 3d printed parts um thanks printy but yeah, there's a few a few things to think about yet but yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna keep making uh, repairing stuff with 3d printed parts see how far i can take it but yeah it's very pleased with it it's awesome Charge